Um, so liquidity refers to paying our debts as, uh, excuse me, at, be, uh, how convertible, quickly things are convertible to cash. Long-term solvency is talking about paying our debts as they come due. So these are all um, things that can be evaluated through the balance sheet, okay, by using information that's on the balance sheet. So liquidity is a really easy one because how quickly things are, you can look at, at what's on the balance sheet. How much cash do they have on hand? How many... How much do they have in assets as far as things that are, are going to be readily convertible into cash? Okay. Um, we talked about this also last week. The balance sheet misses intangible skills and knowledge of people, right? Um, because you, we, we, we give the example of Apple, right? And Apple, who is the most valuable person at Apple before his unfortunate passing? Steve Jobs, right? So when, when Steve Jobs passed, what happened to the stock price right away? It went down. Right? It decreased because there's a lot of value there. A lot of people feel, felt, fortunately, that's not, you know, the Apple stock has gone up. But at the time, that without Steve Jobs, would Apple be able to continue to do what it's doing? Maybe not. So the stock price will go down. However, none of that's reflected um, on, the, on the balance sheet. Another example, you know, if you talk to people, I don't know if you guys know anyone in the, like, the techie world, but if you talk to people who... Um, try to get a job at like Google or may work for Google, you know, they have a whole sorts of testing, like IQ type testing that they put you through just to be able to get into that company, right? That you have to get through, you know, several rounds of IQ tests just to get a job. They put a lot of stock in their people, okay? And that's how they, that's how they feel they're going to get the best people by going through all this sort of, you know, being able to think outside the box type testing. So, um, Another piece of the balance sheet, another limitation, it uses judgments and estimates. So can anyone give me an example of something on the balance sheet that would require judgment or an estimate? Yes. Allowance for bad debts. Allowance for bad debts, right. So this number is not, as long as you can support the number and it's, re, you know, and, and it's deemed to be reasonable, reasonable based on your argument, this could be the number that's on your books. This could have a very big swing in terms of what your um, accounts receivable shows up as, right? and in turn what your bad debt expense looks like on your income statement. Um, any other examples of things that use judgment or estimates? Sales returns, is, but that's really going to be income statement, right, but that's also something that requires um, judgment, yes? Depreciation, well, yeah, in a sense, yes, right, because you're estimating what the useful life is, yes. So the accumulated depreciation piece of it is what, what affects the balance sheet, right, based on what you decide for your depreciation um, overall, yes. Goodwill um, is usually the dip goodwill impairment may be something that has to be estimated. Okay, goodwill itself gets on your books. How? How does goodwill get on your books? And the book, right? Whatever, right? If if you, the net assets, right? Assets minus liabilities. If you pay more than that for the company, then this would be. Um, go to goodwill okay so yes a question well inventory you may um, you may choose first of all you have to choose a method for inventory that's an, a judgment that you have to, to make right I mean well, it's, it's really a choice you have to make more than it is a judgment right you might choose LIFO versus FIFO these are all things that may make ba the balance sheet not comparable from one company to the next right so these are all things you have to consider when you're looking at the balance sheet comparability as you know, is, a, is an essential component of the foundation of why, you know, of accounting. Financial statements should be comparable, but if you think about all these things that we just mentioned just right off the cuff here, all these things that require judgment and use estimates, it's very, you know, it, it's very possible that you're looking at financial statements that aren't quite comparable until you, you know, have to make all sorts of adjustments in your, you know, to what you're looking at. So, do you have a, quite, a yeah. qu are there question? Are tangible assets that are listed on the balance sheet? Do they require judgment? Um, well, you have trademarks, right? You have lots of copyrights, things like that. Yes, yeah, so there are many intangibles that are listed. Um, are that Are they requiring judgment? Um, yeah, I guess to some degree. Some of these would... Um, trademark or a copyright? Um, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, because what goes into the, to, to pricing a patent? Because you are talking about like actual fees and things 
that are incorporated there. Um, I wouldn't think of, of intangibles in that respect as being so much of a, use of, of a use of judgment as I would think about their impairment as being something that can be, uh, you would use judgment for. Okay? Um, so, okay. So let's move on from this. It, so, and again, as we can even see, this should be used in conjunction with the income statement because as we even mentioned, the allowance account, for example, impacts what, what account on that income statement? Bad debt expense. So these numbers work together. Okay, and that's really important. Um, so and I, I have this here, assessing liquidity and solvency. We went through this, you know, just what these things mean. So how quickly assets work, will convert to cash? We're talking about what? Liquidity, right? So creditors want to know, can they pay their bills in the short term 